we shall now go on to our next segment of this mm -hmm. webinar oh my god i had a complication and in this our first speaker is dr anirudh maithi who is a senior vitreo retinal consultant at shushrut eye hospital in kolkata presently also the chairman scientific committee of oswb and a very well renowned surgeon of with great attributes he is going to be talking to us on intraoperative surgeries bleeding spontaneous retinotomies and lost ilm flaps look forward uh, to hearing about it thank you chitra madam and uh, srinivas for giving us this opportunity well i will be showing few of my intraoperative each one of us might have faced a code red situation while operating the cases may not be complex cases but complication might lead to a challenging situation here in this video i will show complication occurring in three simple routine cases case 1 this was a case of a simple dislocation of iol i started with core vitrectomy and then peripheral vitrectomy to make sure that i do not drag any vitreous strand while taking out the dislocated iol i pulled out the iol with the cutter till i reached the pupillary plane then with the help of a forceps i pulled out the iol in the anterior chamber After making the main wound, I tried to pull the IOL outside, but the trailing haptic got stuck in the iris. With a Sensky hook, I tried to dislodge it from the iris, but the haptic caused iris injury and profuse bleeding started. Then I pushed viscoelastic and tried to manipulate the stuck IOL from the iris. By this time, the bleeding trickled down in the vitreous cavity and anterior chamber. Succeeded to release the iol from the iris and make it free. Then the iol was taken out. By this time, the posterior chamber was full of blood, which was gradually aspirated by the cutter. Thick clotted blood deposited in the posterior pole was gradually removed by the cutter. then a posterior fixating iris lens was fixed on the iris so we could manage the case and give a good vision to this patient but we need to be careful while retrieving the iris from the posterior chamber the second case was in case of an old retinal detachment with pvr changes after i did a core vitrectomy tiamcillin acetate was injected to stain the vitreous the peripheral vitreous was then taken care a nasal retinotomy was done to release the thick subretinal fluid but while performing a fluid ear exchange a rare complication occurred all the quadrants had a series of spontaneous radial retinectomy and thereby the retina settled laser was done around the retinotomy the primary break and a series of retinectomies the cause of multiple retinectomies might be a stiff and atrophic retina putting a 360 degree encircled band might have prevented the multiple radial retinectomy at the end we had a nicely settled retina where silicon oil was injected as tamponade the third case was a case of a simple macular hole after staining with bbg dye the island peeling was started after peeling a part of the ilm i realized that hole might not close with conventional peeling so i tried to do a free flap technique 
Got a nice free flap and tucked it inside the hole. shifted to fluid air exchange the flap dislodged from the macula hole ultimately the hole was closed nicely by conventional peeling and mechanical manipulation the take home message from the video is to have a proper planning before the surgery many steps like putting psl while peeling the ilm using valve cannula or using a chandelier light with the help of which we can stabilize the ilm with a forceps could have prevented the lost flap so to conclude any complication irrespective of its nature and extent can be resolved through patience and timely management thank you that was a amazing presentation and great quality of video uh, doctor so let's have some questions from dr srinivas uh, yes sir very very nice presentation where you showed in all your three cases i think the second case was uh, shared in vrsi as well so we had a lot of discussion coming to your uh, so let's hear from shobit sir first well the first is not so rare a complication in the iol case the second case as we had discussed that day at the jailbreaker symposium so nicely designed by anand Uh, it was the thought wave that it's because of posterior attachment of the vitreous base and a thin atrophic retina. The combination of two can cause this kind of a radial tear. And in third, my only request to Anirudh is, which Anirudh pointed out earlier also, that we should plan our case. I would love to do a flap initially. With a hinged flap rather than a free flap. Never so been fan of uh, free flaps, and not a fan of stuffing at all. I just like to overlay the it on top because in stuffing we will definitely damage the RP and cause visual impairment in the long run in recovery. Right. Uh, Anand sir. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. So uh, we talked about the uh, the other case that multiple you know FAE case very dramatic uh, case which we have seen in our virtual BRSI two. Here the same thing a band of tight vitreous around with a uh, coupled with a stiff atrophic retina probably made for this uh, very brittle retina and you know cracking in an uncontrolled manner. Uh, so that was well managed uh, as such. The other thing about the IOL, I mean uh, it's unfortunate it probably you know the plane. Uh, probably what, the only tip I would suggest is when you know that there is resistance, and when you see that the iris is getting distorted, the iris is getting distorted when with the by the trailing haptic. That is the time to reangulate that IOL, send the thing down rather than pulling uh, parallel uh, to the you know the uh, uh, cornea or the surface of the thing. So if you pull like that, you will track the iris alongside. So if you make it dip it down. Readjust, reposition, and then bring it, maneuver it gently. Uh, probably even use a spatula as a scaffold. You can perhaps get it more atraumatically. The one good thing is, at least you uh, did not have this touching the anterior part of the retina. So that was uh, the good thing. So you just had only an iris bleed. So sometimes when you try to pull or manipulate in this horizontal direction. Even that may happen. So at least you averted that. Uh, to the third point about the macula hole thing, I think all of us have gone. Away from stuffing to just overlaying and you know keeping. So we do understand now that you know uh, all the uh, retinal tissue needs is a scaffold. We do not want to you know plug that. So it's not necessary to plug that. We're getting good results with just uh, overlaying. Another technique is the cabbage multiple or the petal technique where you you know just uh, uh, you know bring up these flaps over this. The important thing is to import to leave that hinge there. I think that is important. Alit sir, any quick comments? No, I think I agree. I appreciate uh, Anuradha Mehta because he is a versatile surgeon. All the comments made by all the people, uh, you know, are very easy to say retrospectively, but prospectively very difficult to advise people. You see, but uh, I will. Uh, in the first case, one small comment is that instead of pulling, I normally would place the I will in the anterior chamber first, rather than one hanging and one, uh, you know, in the posterior part, one in the anterior part, then you pull. So that is easier said than done. But I think he did a great job ultimately. 
Yeah. And third, second, third case, I think everybody has agreed that as a primary surgery, we do not do graft. Yeah, actually, I realized it after peeling the the free wage was not there. Still, it succeeded. That, Still, it succeeded. That, that, like, Realize. No, I, I, I agree with uh, what, what, I, what, I do, what I do for, for if, if at all I have to do that, I follow that principle uh, by Atul Dhawan. I will put one drop of visco there. Yeah. And it has helped me in at least uh, eight, ten cases where I have put. And wherever I have not put, that flab has moved actually. I agree with all the panelists. I think uh, Anirudh, sir, great uh, uh, showcase uh, you had seen uh, of your surgical complications. and. Definitely. Under the PFCL, I think Vishal will agree with me. We have done more than 100 cases of these multi-layered ILM peelings. Yeah. You will never have any flap dislodgement. And there is no need to stuck at all. No need. Just the sheer weight of the PFCL will make the flaps go and lie underneath uh, on, on the surface of the macula. I think that will definitely prevent. The only thing we have to be precarious is why do we fluid air exchange? We just have to shift it and move the PFCL away. Because with the active suction, there might be a flap dislodgement. That's yeah. the only thing I would like to say. Thank you very much for sharing your cases, sir.